All right, so now let's talk about a very cool feature that is in Arnold and it's called global light sampling. And before we can get into the details, I just wanted to, well, I first had to create a scene that actually shows the benefits of this. So what you can see here is I created a procedural highway uh, in Houdini. You can see we got lots of cars. I'll just walk you through the setup pretty quick. So we are in Solaris and we just start off by kind of creating a simple model of a highway based on curves. So these are my input curves. And then I'm sweeping them to create some kind of thickness to them. And then based off that, I am kind of generating the surface of the road. Let's see where it is actually. Here, that's the surface of the road. And then in between, I'm creating the barriers based on these input splines essentially, right? So that's kind of the basic idea. Then I'm creating the lamps. This is kind of just based on a line. I'm bending the line. I'm flipping it, moving it, thickening it, and then instancing it on those center points. Lots of them. And then I have my point light. So for each lamp, I created a expression to target the endpoints. And based on that, I'm just extracting the last points and on here, later on we will be copying actual light sources too that will be used for global light sampling and in the end this is then our middle part of the highway and then we do have our road coming in as well so that's kind of the idea and as i said it's all procedural so the cool thing is you can grab an input curve hit enter and i can now let's say move it and then i have a different profile so it's really flexible and I can look through my shot camera, make the alignments as I see fit. Maybe it should go further here. Maybe this one goes too high up. We want this further back. All of that is super easy to adjust um, just with these input curves. And that's kind of the idea. And then for the cars, I'm creating essentially a sweep and these are the traffic lanes and it's a four it's a five lane highway going in both directions and on this lane i'm creating points um, like that and then using an attribute wrangle with a prim uv to allow me to move these points let's view from here and you can see now the traffic kind of moves in those directions and depending on how busy the road is i can kind of give them give more space between cars or really have them back up into each other so that's kind of controlled by this. And this offset is animated, so I can scrub. And then we are back out of here. This is just a simple shader assignment. So I'm creating an Arnold base material, pretty much a grayscale shader. And then that kind of is the output of my highway, which is this. Then I have a simple dome light. As I said, the light instancing is how uh, we get all these lights onto our points. And this is my head, my, my street light, it's a circular light. And using the LOP Solaris instancer, I'm pointing them to my input points, which is here. And then my instanced object is essentially the second input. So now, each kind of light, lamp, sorry, has a light attached to it. And if I would render now uh, with Arnold, I just select it from the drop down menu. It then renders all of our lights. So that is already pretty cool. And then the next item is where we have our vehicles. Kind of the same idea. I'm using my point. Uh, the, the points I showed you before where they travel along the line and then these are my vehicles so I have all these different vehicles here um, all a little bit different and what I did for every vehicle I extracted the head and tail lights you can see there's these dots here and here as well and then I'm using two lights one is for the headlight which is kind of a yellowish thing and the other one is a red light which is for the brake lights, tail lights, and this is um, done for every vehicle. And then I have all these vehicles here. You can see these are all the lights, all the cars, and then they are being fed into the car's instance, and then this is kind of instancing them all over the place. And if I now look from my cache node, which is there to render actually the motion blur, it will do the sub frame sampling. 
I can now scrub and you can see the traffic is driving down our road. If I look through my shot camera, you can see that my cars are traveling where they're supposed to travel. And I can obviously render from this point, in, point of time. This will give us the cars instanced on the GPU. You can nicely see the um, street lamps are actually lighting the cars where they are. At the moment, obviously no headlights, taillights. So this is happening here. So I'm moving to the next stop. And if I render now, we should see the lights. And this is what it looks like at the moment with the lights enabled. So before we jump into this scene fully, I first want to show you how global light sampling affects the scene, All right? So to in order to do that, I have a little uh, example here on the side which shows you exactly what it's doing and how you enable it. Um, so I have my light instancer. It's essentially a subcreate which just creates these points and it's a very simple, it's just a grid and then I'm just using the rows and columns and extracting the vertices pretty much to get points on each edge. You can see that we've got the points and then I have a copy node which allows me to just copy them just to show you how that stuff works and I have exposed these values on the outside so I can easily just increase the amount of lights in an easy manner um, and show you how that kind of works all right and then the same way we have our light at the moment this is a sphere light and it has a radius and it has an instancer and then the lights are being instanced let me switch this to reference then we see the lights actually being copied and if i open up my rollout we have at the moment 5000 lights and global light sampling is really helpful if you have, when you have lots of lights. I would say bigger than 100 where it really makes a big impact in render times. All right, so then I have the grid just for the light to actually hit something in the scene. I've got my render camera. Uh, if I look through that, this is what the render camera looks like. And then I have my honored render settings. At the moment, we do not have global light samplings. We are running on the GPU though. We have adaptive sampling on samples between 3 and 20 and then as i said global light samplings global light sampling is off when this value is zero that means it will sample each light individually and the light sampling value is defined here at the moment we've got two samples per light the default is totally fine it should showcase what we're dealing with here so if i render this now you will see it will do its thing at the moment we are not using uh, the proper instancing because it's uh, actually referencing, it's actually creating a copy of each light, so it's a little bit different, but both will show or work the same way. But anyways, if I switch this to point instancing, they unfortunately disappear in the, in the viewport, but they should still render just fine. And you can see now, these lights are now instanced properly without global light sampling. This is kind of what it looks like, and we have, what did I say, like maybe 6,000 lights? And if we enable global light sampling, all we have to do is increase the light samples to a value bigger than zero. Preferred is a value between, like, I think four and five is a, gives you a pretty good results. For probably five is already a bit much. And then if we hit render again, this is now rendering the same with global light sampling. This is now a little bit hard to judge the render speed. So what I like to do is do kind of a non-interactive render. And let's first disable global light sampling and render this to mplay, which is a Houdini kind of render viewer, and you can render directly into that viewer. And here we go. So we are rendering now on the GPU into the mplay. You can already see the estimated render time is around, what, 40 seconds maybe on the 4090. So the Final render time was 36 seconds to reach this look, this noise level. And if all we want to do now is we increase the light samples to four, not changing anything else. And then we render to M play again. So that is now sending the scene back to the offline renderer and then it will pop up here in M play, M -play in a second. And then we have the scene loaded in M play again and you can already see ETA is 10 seconds 
right? So that that is the difference. We we changed one setting, light samples to four. With a lot of lights, you can see it's a huge render time impact. So let's say we have 36 seconds versus 10 seconds with the same result in terms of the noise, right? So the renderer completes if it reaches a certain noise threshold and then it reached the noise threshold without global light sampling in 36 seconds and the same noise thres threshold was reached with global light sampling, sampling in 10 seconds. So it's a 3.6 times quicker with global light sampling if you have a lot of lights. And if we have less lights, the, it's not a, such a significant impact, but we can, I can demo that quickly. All right, and as you can see, we reduced the lights by a factor of 10 roughly. And this is, you can already see, it kind of has now the same render time. So this frame three render is without global light sampling around five seconds. And then with global light sampling, the same settings it's also around five seconds. So you can see it really plays a significant impact when you have more lights. And that's why it's uh, super helpful if you have huge environments, it's really a big update to your yeah, render times. All right, now let's have a look at this shot again where we have our cars. All right, so now back to our vehicle scene. And as you can tell, each car has four lights. We have around Let's check the point count. We do have 1,000 cars, so it's already 4,000 lights. And then we have our lamp lights, so that's around two per lamp. So let's check. We have 62, so 120 for that. So we have roughly four, four and a half thousand lights in this scene, and they are all traveling. So what I wanted to achieve with this render is the typical long exposure render where you see the tail and headlights kind of smear into these streaks. And the setup is you have to, in Solaris, you have to cache it so the renderer knows the subframes and subsamples and all of that stuff. And then when it's sampled, then you can, or you would need to apply, at least that, that is now specific to Arnold, and Arnold you would need to apply deformation keys, otherwise, you will not get curved motion blur. If it's just 301 key or whatever, then it will be kind of jagged. So you need to increase the deformation keys. Usually that number should be tied in exactly to the subframe sample. So I should probably be fine with just eight. And then in this cache node, you specify the shutter open and close duration. So 10 units, uh, it will stay open for 10 units backwards and then 10 units ahead of time. So when you take a picture at frame 10, it will sample until frame zero and up to frame 20 pretty much. So that's how long the exposure is open. For me at the moment, it does not make sense because I, I just have six before and six after. So my, my sampling is probably too much. But anyways, let's just uh, go to Arnold. And you know, I've got light samplings enabled, um, adaptive, like the same render settings as we just had in our uh, test example. And I want to render this now as well to mplay, and then we can see uh, what we get here. So uh, I'll see you in a second. All right, so this now is the scene rendered with a longer shutter exposure. You can see the nice streaking of the red lights and the headlights, they all kind of smearing across the screen. And that's kind of just what I wanted to show. And actually I looked, it's not 4,000 lights, it's actually uh, 10,000 lights plus the 200 from the lamp. So it's a lot more than in our testing scene. And it shows, I have this one rendered in two minutes, 15 seconds with global light sampling on at four. And then my other example is still going and the ETA is still going. You can see it's 33 minutes. It started out with 40 minutes. So I rendered already two minutes in and we are only at 6%. And the other one was done already by two minutes, roughly. So this is the same scene, nothing changed. This is the only difference is global light sampling, in this case is disabled. And you can see um, it's exactly the same lighting, nothing changed, but it's just still going and it will take a lot longer. So this is just a very good production example how this will affect your scenes. And it's a tremendous increase 
I would say if you have more than 100, more than let's say 500 lights. All right, let's jump to the next one.